I've worked through my ABBA playlist this morning and then Crowded House and now I was thinking Def Leppard. What a weird collection of music, but it's something that I do when I'm working. Good morning here with Websites for Beginners. I'm JP and we'll be looking at the pricing table, the jet element from Croco Block. Pricing table, probably nothing new to people. Let's have a look at how it drags in by default. I'm just going to type in pricing table. And then let's drag it in and see how it looks. And you'll notice the first thing is that I've made three columns here. Usually for pricing tables, it's good to put them in columns. If you just put them in one section, it is just too wide and it doesn't have that effect. And again, the great feature about a pricing table is that it's a shortcut. It is an action that allows you to combine an icon, title, title, um, some text, and then more text with icons and a button all in one widget and that makes it very powerful and all of these can be styled there's really nothing unique or remarkable about it except that it does a good pricing table so everything is here that you can go through and there is nothing like i said really special about it which makes it very special the only thing that i could add here for you to take note of is this one called where is it do, do, do. ah now i have to find it table ah container uh, action button price and that's the only thing learning where these things are feature i'm looking for the separator someone out there quickly tell me where it is Header icon pricing features must be then here. Let's go all the way down. Features divider. Oh, look how far it is. Boy, this is something that I still would recommend Elementor needs to, to somehow help us dig into these menus and find these things easier. It's a problem with any page builder. It starts off very clean and very easy to get your head around. But as functionality grows, it becomes complicated. Ask any person who starts off with Photoshop. It is really complicated to help people begin into Photoshop because there are so many layers, no pun intended, included in Photoshop that it becomes quite a beast. If you had done PowerShop 10 years ago, you would have quickly stepped into it. But as things are added onto it, it becomes complicated. Things are within menus, within menus. And the biggest problem is Sometimes, from a user interface perspective, it doesn't make sense anymore. But then, if you make changes to it, the old users, the power users, they will throw a tantrum online. Why did you remove this button? Why did you change the color of this thing? Why did you change the menu outlay? Those are the things that happen when you start making things, is that people get used to it, even though it's maybe not the best way, but they are used to it. Ugh mumbo jumbo right let's look at the features divider i add this and then you will see this divider appear here between these features this help a little bit with separation and i like this one called dashed i don't often have a purpose for dashed but in this case i do like it and then with the weight you can make it a little bit thicker and the width is the one that i would say you play around until you get it like that and reduce the gap between the features right that's good Another thing that you have to be aware of is what are these checks and what are the crosses? Those are, if you go to content and you go to features, what is called included and not included. So, for example, in this package, you get this, you get this, but you don't get these. If you take the other package, so let's copy it and then paste it, you will get that. So we go to this one, go to features, go to feature number three. And then we say is included, include it, and you will see it becomes a green check. So this will be option number three. If we go to this one, and this will be the full package, click on it, go to features, feature three, include it, and feature four, include it. There we go. Right? Very nice. I'm going to duplicate this column so that we have four. The reason I'm doing that is something that I've learned from the pre-made sections from Croco Block. When you are working with things in columns like this, you have to suddenly have this red flag go up in your mind. No pun intended again. It's a blue flag, not red. How will this look in responsive view? Let me show you how it's going to look in tablet. 
mm, not good, right? And mobile? Mobile is fine. So you're going to have a problem with tablet. And that is where you have to go in and make changes. So for each column, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the column, not on the widget, here on the column, and then with column width in percentage, leave it at 50%. And then for this one, also 50%. And this you will do, of course, if you did it to one column, I wonder, let's click on the column, copy, will it work? Paste style, it works. If you don't try it, you won't know it. So I just copied that style to all the columns. That is where it works very nice. For the section also, you can play around with the content width at 1000 mm, over there. Okay, no, that doesn't matter really. Let's put it in but you have to do it for all of them. So I'm just going to, yeah, let's just leave it at 1,200. Okay, good. So you see, just take into consideration that you need to go into your tablet view, otherwise those things are going to be way too squashed. Let's look at a few of the examples that come with CrocoBlock. And this is a very nice one. They've got a background that they've added here, and then they've applied some negative margins on the image to take it all the way up there. And again, you can see it's everything up there. The only difference is styling. And I'll say it again. What makes this special will not be the widget itself, but how you style it, making sure that things are cohesive, using good color schemes, using appropriate fonts, and making it look good. If you go from this one to the next one, look at the difference. I really, really like this flat mono color displays. They are very nice for me, very powerful, very business-like, and they also have animation as they come in. The next one, very similar again, but I want to point you to a feature that is called this one over here. Now, we've got here three different widgets, and if you click on the one in the middle and you go on the general, you will see is featured and if i deactivate it you will see that little banner disappear if i click again on it you will see it comes back take note though that this is something you need to bring into your library as a image and then it can be used here if you don't have an image nothing will appear there you can change its location and you can bring it down as well. Of course, in this situation, it won't make much sense to do that. I'll show you the next one where you will do that. And this is this one. So two things, it's often used to make it stand out like this and apply negative margins. This is applied to the widget. So if you click on the widget, you go to advanced, you will see there's a negative margin of 40. So if I take that out, you will see it comes back to the rest of them. And if I say again, minus 40, what did I do? Oh, yeah, let's make it minus under it. Okay, I started. Let me just continue scrolling. Did I say I would like to have a scrubby slider in here? Yes, a scrubby slider would be very nice. So just check that. This is also something very nice that you can use for that. For the content, I'm just curious about the background. Okay, and then here is the feature that we saw similar to this one up here. So again, if you click on it and you go to content, you will see is featured. Yes, if I say off, it will remove that little icon or image or yeah, I think it's image, normal image. And then here you will have to load it from your media library. And then here, this is where the top indent will come into play now. You can leave it there at the top or you can bring it down, but it looks pretty nice over there. Very good styling, very good graphic design. I think the guys at CrocoBlock, whoever is doing their design, they've got a good head for what should look good on a website. And you should go into their library. If you don't have the full package, you will not probably see this button if you're just buying the Jet Elements. But if you see this button, it means you've got the full CrocoBlocks add-on. And this is really, uh, I know when my friend Eve had introduced me to it, he said, you will love the magic button. And indeed, the magic button opens magical doors. You can have full pages that you can import. And then here for the sections, that's where I found them. You go to sections, you scroll down to pricing table, 
and you have all these ideas of how you can play with the pricing table. Don't reinvent the wheel. Look what others have done, then copy and then improve or, well, make it yours. Give it some character. Nice little widget. It does what it does. It's a pricing table from CrocoBlock.